In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take a snapshot looking photo and turn it into a professional headshot. Let's dive into Photoshop. As a portrait photographer, one of the things I frequently do is go into our local hospitals and provide doctors and nurses with headshots and action photos that the hospital can then use for their marketing materials. And when we do these headshots, it is quick and ugly. And basically the doctor comes out, sits in a chair. I snap a photo using, I do bring a studio light with an Octobox with me. Um, I don't have time to look for pretty backgrounds, check for great natural light. Everything is done very quickly to get the doctor or the nurse in and out as absolutely quickly as possible. So I may snap three photos and that's all I get. I don't have time to check my settings. I don't have time to uh, make adjustments to the light. So as you can see in this photo, I shot at F4.5 to get kind of a nice depth of field. We want the subject to be completely in focus. I was at ISO 400, 1 125th of a second. Like I said, I did use a studio light with an Octobox. I'm going to show you how to take this snapshot looking photo and turn it into a professional headshot that the hospital could then use on their website or use in any marketing material to promote this doctor. So the first thing I do is look at the raw image. Right away, what are the big things we notice? Well, the the jacket is way too bright. So I'm going to bring the whites down, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit. I'll go ahead and turn the shadows up. And I think I'm going to make the image a little bit cooler just so her skin tone isn't too warm. And that looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and open the image. The latest versions of Photoshop have incredible selection tools. It is so easy now to select a subject and put it on its own layer and put in a new background. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing I do is crop the image. And I typically crop these images as five by sevens. So now that our image is cropped, let's duplicate the layer by pressing Command and J. Now we'll go under Select and choose Subject. And there's our subject. I'm going to press the Add Layer Mask icon. And I'll turn off our background layer. And you can see that Photoshop has automatically done a pretty good job of selecting our subject. We're going to make a few revisions in just a second. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and add our background. I have a collection of backgrounds that I've made that you can actually purchase on my website. They're 10 bucks. I'll put a link in the description below. And you simply drag them into your image and resize them. I'm holding down the option key as I resize so that it pulls it out from the center. Then I'll press enter to confirm the changes in the size of our background. Now let's blur our background. So I'm going to come up to blur and hit Gaussian blur. And let's take that up to about, we'll do about 20 pixels. Press enter. The next thing I like to do is make a new layer. And with the brush tool with a very soft white brush, I like to dab once in between the background and the subject. And that kind of gives a little bit of a, like a background light was lighting the background. Okay, let's take a look at our extraction. A couple little things we can do. First of all, the top of her hair looks pretty good. With the brush tool selected, and I'm gonna paint with white, I'm just gonna fill in some of these little areas where it may have taken away too much hair. And I'm going to clean up this spot at the bottom. And that looks pretty good. We'll fix this little area over here. As I paint with white, it brings back the original picture. And if I paint with X, it cuts it away. Now you can see that there's a little bit of a dark line around her jacket, particularly right here. That is easy to fix. I'm gonna make sure that our mask is selected. Press L for the lasso tool. I'm just gonna drag the lasso around where I want the edge refined. 
come up to filter and select minimum and make sure preserve roundness is selected and I'm just going to move this slider until we don't see that dark edge. So here's before and here's after. All the minimum filter does is takes away a little bit of that edge. Let's check the other side. Yep, you can see a little bit right here. Go to filter minimum and we'll run the same filter again. And as far as the extraction goes, that's pretty good. And now let's retouch the image. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image because we don't need these layers anymore. We're happy with the selection. We're happy with the background. I set up a shortcut on my Photoshop so that Command F flattens all the layers together. Let's take a look at our skin tone. I'm going to go into the camera raw filter by hitting Shift, Command, and A. And let's go down to the color mixer. And with oranges selected, I'm just going to move the slider a little bit to the left to add a little bit more red to her face and maybe take the saturation down just a little bit. And we can play with the luminance, see how that looks. And I think that looks better than before. Let's hit OK. So here was before and here's after camera raw. You can just see that we took some of the yellow out of her face and I think that's a much better skin tone for her. Okay, let's fix up this image. Again, being on a time crunch, I have found this software that really speeds up my workflow. I'm gonna duplicate the layer, go to filter, and there is a set of plugins called Retouch For Me. Now they are expensive, but they do save me a ton of time. The interface for this software really isn't that great, but you know what, it doesn't matter because the software works really well. So if I select Make Mask, hit apply. We now have the edits it has done on this new layer. And I can turn them off and on and you can see on her skin that it goes around and fixes little flaws very quickly. Unfortunately, if she had a mole on her face, it would take the mole off. So that's why I put it on a new layer so I can bring back the facial features that I want to keep. All right, let's flatten that again. Next filter I'm going to show you by Retouch for me is Dodge and Burn, which is incredible. Again, saving me hours of time. The interface for the software is not very good. It's hard to see what you're doing. Um, you can click the original button and it will show you before and after. But again, it's hard to see because the preview is a little bit pixelated. I'm just going to hit apply and now watch what it has done. If I hit undo and back and forth, you can see that it has dodged and burned the image pretty well, giving her face a lot softer look. Next thing we'll fix is a little bit of shine. And this is really easy to do with the brush tool selected. I'm going to hold down option so that we get the eyedropper and I'm going to sample part of her skin that's not shiny. And that is now our foreground color. So I'm going to come down and add a solid color fill layer. Press OK because we already have our color selected. Now double click on this layer. In the underlying layer, I'm going to bring the slider to the right. And you can see that it brings back the original image. And once I start to see the shine on her forehead, I'm going to hold down Option and separate these two sliders. These sliders are telling us that we don't want this color layer to show anywhere where the image is dark or even the midtones. We only want it to show in the extreme highlights. Now let's try to get that shine completely out of there. And that looks good. Press OK. Now we have to invert the layer mask by hitting Command or Control I. And now I'm just going to brush with a white brush over those shiny areas to reveal that color layer that we just blended in. Now, obviously it's too strong. We're gonna turn it back in just a second. There we go. And now let's turn the opacity way down. We wanna see a little bit of the shine because that gives her face the shape. Still probably a little too strong. Let's turn it back just a little bit. 
So here's before and here's after. So we just basically turned it down a little bit. I think that looks good. Next, as I often do, I should have had her close her jacket a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and close it for her. I'm going to use the pen tool and just make a little outline of where her jacket should be closed. Now, once I've closed the loop, if I hit Command and Return, it will make it into a selection. I'm going to hold down Command and C to copy it and then paste it on its own new layer. So that layer is on top. So let's liquefy this layer. So I'm going to go to Filter and go to Liquefy. Okay, with the Forward Warp tool selected, which is the very top corner one, I'm just going to bring her jacket a little closer together like this. Make my brush smaller. It may take a minute to sort of work it in there so it looks natural. Now we'll hit OK and see how it looks. Let's go ahead and take out this line where the buttonhole is. So I'm going to make my brush a little bigger and that looks good let's take out some of the wrinkles in her jacket so i'm going to flatten our image again and i'm going to run a basic frequency separation action you can find these all over the web and with our color layer selected i'm going to use the mixer brush and the mixer brush allows us to smear these colors together. So the areas of the shadows that are darker white, I'm just going to smooth out a little bit so it kind of removes the wrinkles. If you would like to learn more about frequency separation, I do have a video about that that explains it in full. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. I'm going to go to liquify one more time because I'm going to try to get her jacket to look a little bit better. And this time we're just liquefying the entire image. Perfect. Hit OK. Let's take a look at her teeth. There's a little bit of lipstick on there. I'm just going to use this spot healing brush and I'm going to paint out the lipstick that's on her teeth. That looks good. Let's take a look at her eyes. Let's take out these little blood vessels there. That looks nice. Now let's brighten up her eyes a little bit. Let's just make a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to turn the brightness way up. Now I'm not looking at her face. I'm just looking at her eyes right now. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hold down command I to invert the mask with the brush tool set to white on a very soft brush. I'm just going to paint in the opposite area of where the catch light is. Now it looks too bright right now, but let's turn the opacity down. Always important to zoom back out so you can see if you're doing too much. Let's turn it down just a little bit more. Perfect. With the burn tool, I'm going to quickly darken her pupils. And there we go. Let's go back into Camera Raw one more time. I think I'm going to boost the exposure just a tiny, tiny bit. Give it a little bit more contrast. Turn the whites down just a little bit. And we're going to go to Effects and add a little bit of Vignette. And there we go. Now we have a professional headshot. So we turned a snapshot into this. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything new, Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, all that usual YouTube stuff. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.